Ricky Harris of Washington, the winner of 1637. Bill Barnett, Oklahoma, 1676. On your mark. Yeah. Naturally, I mean, uh, when you get to be 87, 88 years old, you know, it ain't like it used to be, you know that. <laughs> Everybody that I play, I want to beat. Of course, I don't always win, but uh, at least I've been there trying. I think it's a lot of fun, win or lose. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it keeps you interested and keeps you going. I am Roger Gellholm. I was born on the 21st of May, 1909, on the kitchen table on a third floor tenement in New Bedford, Massachusetts. I am now 100 years old. I have no medication and look forward to the next match. Every morning, Roger's there, the first one. Last year, he made the reservation for this year, Senior Olympics in August. That's how positive it was, and he said, I can't wait till I'm 100 so I can get in the 100 and over group. And he was all excited about that. He said, I can't wait for it. He's our role model. In case any one of us who were in the 70s or 80s think that we might be looked upon as old, we don't feel that way when Roger's around because he's, he's, our, he's our inspiration. Uh, you can be uh, alert and active even when you're 100. Many people keep telling me that I'm an inspiration to them, not only older people, but the younger people. I had arthritis, very bad. I had the cancer operation in 87. I had a hernia. I've lost five inches in height. Now I'm below five foot. But whatever happens, you just have to roll with the punches. He always said that he wanted to live to be a hundred. That was always a goal. And now that he has, and he has basically a new life, he, he's saying that already, that this is like a second life for him because he feels good, he's healthy, he's doing more than he's ever done. So he feels kind of renewed now that he started his second century. Yeah, I'll have to have the soul tested next week. Do you have any muffins? Oh, I think so. It's like I have a teenager who's a champion athlete. So how was your game today? Well, I did pretty well today. I tried to drop it over the net <laughs> with, with a spin to it. I do pretty good with my serve. Of course, it's not as powerful as it used to be, but uh, I'm heading for the Nationals in August, and 
I surprise him sometimes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mavis Alvin, team captain. I'm Mary Benson, and I love to win. Hi, I'm Loretta Hill. I'm Kitty Sparacella. My name is Wanda Blaylock. My name is Nikki Leader. And we are the Southern Tigerettes! Yay! <laughs> We're ordinary grandmothers, and people cannot believe that we play basketball. Our record is 165 and three, and we're going for our number six gold medal, and we feel like we're the greatest senior women's basketball team in the United States. My last name is Leader, so I try to live by that name as a leader on the team. Walk, walk through it, walk through it. Oh. Ready, go. Yeah. Once the people in our communities find out we play basketball, they look at us different. When little kids find out we're national champions, they look at us in a different way. Not like a bunch of grandmothers, but a bunch of active senior adults. I hope we're a bit intimidating. The fact that we've won five national championships should be intimidating. I know I would be intimidated if I knew I was going to play this defending national champion. So l let's make it a point in this next time preparing to get together more yeah, and just work. Shall I hand them out? I'll hand them out. Yeah, okay. You gonna serve us? You got the tea say. server? One. But Mary, that's the one I want. <laughs> there's, another, there's another one. See here. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate Tell it. Tell us the story about the cups. I want oh. to hear the monkey punch story. <laughs> <laughs> I played basketball when I was in high school, and when I graduated, there was nowhere else to go play. When we graduated, that ended our basketball career. So it went from 1954 till 1992 that I did not play basketball. But 1993, my whole world changed. Everything changed. My attitude even changed. And we have been very successful, much more than I would have ever dreamed. Nor, you see, you had to float at that time. You know, every time that we played in the Nationals, our toughest rival has always been the team from Louisiana. We first played them in 1999 in the Nationals in Orlando, and that's where, I guess you would say, the rivalry started. There's a difference between their team and our team. We play a finesse game, and they play a, let's say, a muscle game. <laughs> now, they outweigh us by 30, maybe 40 pounds. And everybody in the U.S. National wants to win, and some will do it at all costs. That's about all I'm going to tell you on that one. <laughs> You feel like you have a big red target on your back? Yes, we do. And yeah, people are shooting to beat us, and I would do the same thing. I would, I would play hard and prepare myself to beat that team that's supposed to be the best. Yeah, that's what makes me nervous. They getting better each time. There's no bad blood between us, but as long as we're playing and they're playing, it's going to be the game to look out for each year. 
The last tournament we played in, I had a, a busted lip. Mary was bruised all over, be from all the pushing and shoving. <laughs> Kitty had a broken finger, and uh, Nikki had a black eye. Looked like she'd been in a prize fight. But uh, we forget about that. that. When we get on the court, we forget that we're supposed to be, still be ladies. We're basketball players then. Look at this score. Our score is 64, there's 18. Wow. We tore them up. <laughs> and Mavis is sitting there at That's 70 right. years old wondering what she's talking about. Let's think about that for a minute now. They are the ladies' senior Olympic basketball champions. And so first and foremost, they're ladies. You were in here. They've all got to have the hair done, and they've got to go get the right. The time they took to just pick out the uniforms that they wore, I mean, that, that took forever. So every part of their life makes them a lady. And then they are Olympians because they're going to win. They're going to get out there, and they're going to win. Oh, this is magic, man. You're yeah. wonderful. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, y'all are wonderful. You're awesome. <laughs> Put him in a bag, take him on every trip we yeah. we'll go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm Bradford Tatum, everybody calls me Brad, and that's my brother John, my big brother. I traveled with him all over, and we started swimming in the 20s, and we've been swimming ever since. We lived in a neighborhood where there wasn't a pool for blacks. Now, there were pools, but we couldn't go to them. So we had swam in the reflecting pool at the Lincoln Memorial or in the river or in the canal in Georgetown. This is where we start to swim. Couldn't get very far. And it wasn't all slimy and stuffy like it was then. And I used to envision the Olympics being held here. Because of this pool would be a, you could swim a mile straight away yeah. in a pool. <laughs> yeah, John, that's 25, that's 40 cents at least. Okay, well, jump on in there and get it. Nick, I thought it was a sport. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it helped me up. Pool, pool, John. Pool harder. Pool harder. <laughs> I got you. Come on now. You have to do something. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Ah. I hope to win fourth first place in the coming Olympics. Here's my wish. <laughs> Take your mark. We've been competitive, you know, all our lives, playing baseball, football, basketball, tennis. And so this is another kind of competition. John, you'll save yourself a lot of energy, too, if you huh? work on the extension. When your arms go forward, try to get them forward as far as you can, okay? I have never won a gold nationally like Brad has. Brad won three golds. But I used to beat him when he was young, but I can't beat him now. <laughs> the, the idea is to compete, and you don't have to win, but whenever you do win, it's a nice feeling. The feel in your, your age group that you, you're pretty good. Winning is everything, Brad. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> good guys finish last. last. <laughs> <laughs> Competing is all it is to it.
We're like two peas in a pod. He rolls this way, I roll that way too. So that's the way it goes. I sure do that. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. All right, All right. Do you know how to hold my hand? Oh, I know. I used to know. Yeah, used to. Yeah, used to know. Don't do so much now. No. No. When I first met Bradford, I was a freshman, and he was the president of the senior class. Bradford was always a swimmer, and I thought he had a real pretty stroke, you know, when he swam. No, what's the little street that goes? He's a very time. kind person and a very loving person, and people like Bradford. Now, I don't know what else I can say. I'm handsome. Oh yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, he's saying so. I don't know about that, Bradford. But he is. He's tall. That's for the record. Yeah, he, well, he was tall when I married him. He's not so tall now. So uh, that's my Bradford. Okay. In May, they called me in for a checkup. Hello, Mr. Tatum. How are you doing today? Fine. How's the swimming going? Pretty good. Good? Pretty good. You still good. having a good amount of energy? Yeah. And uh, they told me I had colon rectal cancer. That's what I had. How is your Metaport working for you? Uh, pretty good. It doesn't uh, interfere with the swimming, and they, and they can use it for the chemotherapy. Let me take a look at that real quick. They, they said that if I didn't have this uh, operation, they wouldn't give me much hope for lasting out the whole year. Deep breath in, blow it out. So uh, I said, of course, as long as it's done after I come back from the Olympics. I didn't want it to be done ahead of the Olympics. I wanted it to be done after the Olympics. Then if anything happens and I didn't get back, uh, that's all right. Come on, this way to the infusion center. All right. No, now that he's sick, really sort of sick, let's say sort of sick, huh? Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're still a hoping, and we still hope you'll be able to get in there and get in that competition and compete. I got to go see the doctor on, what, Tuesday, I think. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably be a new man after they kept through working on me. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, maybe so. Yeah. I'm Earl Blassengame. I'm in a sad part of my life right now because I lost my wife just four months ago. She was my best friend. And that's that's been a, that's been uh, real hard on me. And uh, we were married 64 years and had two two wonderful daughters. Two grandsons and two great grandsons. And so yeah, I'm going through a period right now that if it wasn't for my daughter that I'm living with and her husband, I don't know what to do. I'm sure like the rest of us, he felt lost the first couple of weeks after, but I think he has gotten back into life very quickly and went back and started practicing 
for the Olympics two weeks after her passing. After 64 years of marriage, you kind of get used to somebody being around. But I, I think he's filled his life as best as he could. He can't fill that. You know, you just can't fill that hole. But he can certainly uh, fill the edges around it as best as he can. And I think that's what he's doing, getting prepared for the senior games. I didn't know this senior games existed until my daughter called me and said, Dad, I want you to start thinking about getting into track and field in the senior games. And I said, what the heck is the senior game? Never heard of them. And she says, well, you, uh, I'll give you all the details. I said, I'm 82 years old. And she says, there's older people in that than you that are winning. So to make a long story short, I entered my first competition and I beat all my competitors in both the shot put discus and javelin. So I got a month to go before we go to the Nationals in California. But the guy, you know the guy that beats me is a guy named Adolph Hoffman. He's one of the best athletes I've ever seen. I've competed against him. And he throws that hammer 90 feet. I'm Adolph Hoffman. I was born in Somerset, Texas. As my brother used to say, with very little clothes on. <laughs> and never lived anywhere else. Strike one. Any kind of game I play, you're out to win. And I participate in about 13 events. Well, you know, you know the Bible says you can have faith, but faith is dead without works. So if you got faith that you can break a record and do excel a real good one, you better work at it because the faith is not going to get you through it. You got to do it. And I'm a doer. I guess you'd call me a doer with everything I do. Let's go, Adam. In the beginning, in the Hoffman family, there was pole vaulting. <laughs> How it got there uh, is a little bit uh, uh, hazy, but we do know that sometime back in the late 20s, our oldest brother inherited a pole vault from a cousin. And from then on, pole vaulting was the family sport. Let's see what you got. You, uh, you had good penetration into the pit. You went straighter, and uh, and it almost looked like you need a little bit more time to swing. You've got to swing your hips up higher. And get your... Adolph's an interesting story. He drove up my driveway one day when I wasn't home and told my wife he's, he was looking for that pole vaulting guy, you know, looking for someone to, to teach him how to pole vault with a bending pole. And I think she thought he was a little bit crazy, and I probably thought the same thing. Uh, but uh, once I, I met him, he came out to practice and, and told me that he wanted to break the world record for his age group. And he asked if I could help. And I said, well, I, you know, I don't know if I can, but I'll, I'll give you my best shot. We'll move to 37, okay. and we'll put a bar up and okay. work your technique now, over the bar. For the same hole? Yeah, we'll go up another hand, I think, which will uh, give you a little bit of time to swing higher. Adolph is in the age 85 to 89 year old age group and the world record I believe is eight feet even set by Dr. William Bell. But Adolph, he's a guy who responds well in competition. He gets adrenaline flowing if he gets a crowd behind him. I think he's very capable of pushing that record and jumping over eight feet. 
We'll get it. If he were to break the world record, it would be phenomenal. The San Antonio community would hear about it, probably front page sports section. So we don't see an end to the pole vault tradition of the Hoffman family. Eight foot, a half inch. Any distance over eight foot, I win it. That's the world record. Everybody wants to win, right? We're in this to win, everybody. Uh, certainly, I want, I'd like to win four goals, absolutely, but I'm just looking at it uh, from a practical standpoint. I know who I'm competing against, and I hate to keep saying this, but this guy is terrific. I think they have sort of a, a friendly competition going between the two of them. I think they're each other's biggest competitor. I got it between six and seven hundred, I guess, and about eighty percent of them are first. And uh, very few thirds. Uh, he threw oh, that. Right. That's the best one. The past state meet, he won four goals in this this series of events, and I won four silvers right behind him. See, and he beat me bad in most of them, but he cheated a little bit in the javelin. Harold Blasson game, he's a great competitor, but he seemed comfortable with second place. And uh, of course, I'm gonna try to keep him there. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll be lucky to win maybe three medals at the most. Hopefully a gold, I don't know. But we're sure as hell I'm gonna give it a try. Like you mean it, like you're in a race for your life. You have to feel as long as you can do something, swim, run, jump, climb, that if you stop, you'll lose it. Why would we miss a national, national showing of our abilities? So he, yeah, he just had the heart, man. That's, a lot of heart, a lot of heart. All done? Let me stick the fork in and see. <laughs> you going to We're book style. style. <laughs> this team is style. style. You go you gotta get, you gotta go. It's confidence, complete confidence in yourself that you're going to come out on top. Up and over and away. You know, the Bible says that when you're conceived in your mother's room, that he has a plan for you. And I believe it. I found out one thing about all of my throwing. It's not necessarily the strength of the individual, you know, the muscles and condition, it's the technique. And I have not yet hit my tops in the technique for it. That's what I'm working on right now. I would say California, you better watch out for yourselves because I think he's gonna come back with a medal. Oh, he's a winner, that's for sure.
for an old guy like me, I'm not really good in any of them. I don't throw them very far, you know, any of them. But uh, the closest thing I think I can possibly come to a goal is in the shot put. Earl, you are up. Eight off on goal. Hey, if he can beat me well and good, and I'll accept it. And he'll accept it, too, if I beat him. So he has so far, I think. <laughs> I've never beaten Adolph yet in anything. So I hope he's weak this time and I can beat him, you know. But as I say, it's friendly competition. And I don't want to get him too upset, you know. Adolph! There you go, big boy. Right Good luck. Seven feet, one and a half. Twenty-seven feet. Yes, we will need a, a great bunch of prayers to be old laid off. He's good. This year's winner is Adolph Hoffman. So far, I'm in third place. Second place, Earl Blazing Game. Don't give up getting that rocking chair. I'm not a math team. No, so I'm not either. Blazing Game is up. I gotta get my spin faster. Hoffman, you're up. That is a record. That's what I love about the Senior Olympics. I mean, everybody cheers for each other, and if you beat them, they don't get mad at you. I mean, you just, they just thrill that you can do that much good. Well, uh, of course, you're not satisfied unless you win the big one, but I came out uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth in the few things I do. Some people ask me, say, why are you so mean and try to beat everybody like that? I said, well, if I beat them, then that tells them they got to train a little harder to beat me. That's what he's always saying. <laughs> got to train a little harder to beat me if they're going to. Yeah, I'm going to train a little harder. You ain't going to get me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get him. That's, 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 uh, he's my buddy. I, I might train a little harder, too, but no. Congratulations. I mean, I'm. I'd like to beat Hoffman's, what I'd like to, <laughs> but I, I don't think I'll ever do it unless he has a bad day, you know. And I have a good day. Just ask you now to help us to win this gold medal. Help every ball that we shoot to go in. Every time we go to a tournament, we know the teams that we're coming up against are just as ready to play as we are. One, two, three, celebrate! They're getting tougher and tougher and meaner and meaner. Give preference to the one closest to the basket. It's a hard fought game when we play each other. Defense! They don't want to lose to us just like we don't want to lose to them. It's that type of game. I know we can beat them, and there's no doubt in my mind, and I know they know we can beat them. Hey, ladies, coin toss. Heads, tails. Call in there, Captain. Tails. Tails is called. Tails. That's in blue.
those ladies are not little dainty ladies on the court. They're out there rough just as we are. We'll dish it out. They're going to dish right back. Oh, there was a lot of high emotions. I mean, especially when I was getting two black eyes and a fat lip and a broken thumb. But yeah, that was that was rough. <laughs> when we go to a national tournament, we don't even think about silver. We don't think about bronze. We don't want that. Our goal is gold. have said we were so rough, but basketball is a physical game. Anybody would know that. Everybody asks me if uh, you think Bradford's going to make it and uh, how's he doing? Huh? I say he is San Francisco bust. Yeah. <laughs> he, he will go. And so it happened. I'm in chemotherapy two or three times a week. And uh, then when they say, OK, you can go and practice a little bit, then I go and practice. And two days later, I'm back getting more chemotherapy. You all right? All right. Let's see if we can go for another medal, OK? I'm trying. I mean, hey, that would make you feel good, wouldn't it? All right, feel better, yeah. Just courage and faith and strength and believe. That's where the inspiration helps me. Like I say, whether I live or die, I'm going to make this to the end. You know, I'm going to work at it and do it until the end. Yeah, you did it. You did it. You are the boss today. Exultation. Just, <laughs> just great feeling that I had accomplished what I've been working for all with along. It's a great feeling. How does it feel to be a champ? Oh, I tell you, I'm tired, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> from Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah, from Arkansas, I remember. Good to see you. Nice seeing you again, too. It's always nice to meet people again. Yes, indeed. That means I'm still alive. That's right. <laughs> they want both of us with the with our pacemakers showing. Yeah. Both of us. And you're
junior gold medalist from the District of Columbia, age 88, Bradford Tatum. Roger, may I have your autograph? Oh, you got my me? picture. I hadn't seen it. Very good. It has been amazing how many people come forward and really care about the fact that he's 100 years old and he's out here playing. Very good. You got it? And you are who? I'm Ray Aparicio. Ronaldo, actually, the one who's going to play against you today. I see. My name is Ronaldo Aparicio, and I'm very pleased and very happy to meet this gentleman. At least I would like to know who he is, how well he plays, and so forth. But being that I'm going to have a challenger, I do, I'll do my best to hopefully get a few points against him. I hope to be able to hold up all right. Uh, you're from I, the state of Massachusetts. I, I, I tell did me. a lot of dancing last night. <laughs> boy. I understand that the fellow that I'm playing today is only 94 years old. So I'm playing a youngster again. It's hard to find a hundred year old tennis players around the country. And if there are any, they don't show up very much. I'd like to meet one one of these days. of that attention and, and, and I'm getting a kick out of that. To be a hundred years old, be on the courts playing tennis is a great accomplishment and it's a lot of fun. Well, you get some pretty good drop shots. Well, they have a bunch of oil and Yeah, you get those. Well, the main thing is like, put the ball where they ain't. So I'm gonna try to put the ball where he isn't. So maybe he can move it. Maybe he can't, I don't know. We'll see. Just lost the match. Just, uh. How you doing, Roger? I couldn't do better. <laughs> well, you're a tough hombre. Uh, you know what hombre is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and a Mexico. <laughs> Mexico, yeah. Yeah, you know that one. I hope I can get your name and address someplace. Yeah. Because I want to wish you birthday whenever you yeah. 101. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous night. For so gallantly walking, for so gallantly screaming, and the rockets red glare. I am quite disappointed in not winning. I try hard, but my opponents sometimes outdo me. I'm disappointed, but I'm lucky that I am here to be able to play. It's been a pleasure being here and meeting all you people and uh, enjoyed playing. To celebrate my gold medal, I'll have a couple of good gin and tonics and have a nice meal with good company.
when we were little guys, they were segregated pools. But to compete as an adult, even after your days of athletics that seem to be over, it's just a new revival. <laughs> I said, I never won a gold, and I'm going to win a gold. I had silver, but I'm going to win a gold medal. Having lived through segregation, and now to have our first black president, it's a wonderful feeling, and one that I had doubts that we would ever see in our lifetime. Mission accomplished. You won? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I won my first gold medal in national competition. Felt like I was on top of the world. I said, got a gold medal. Instead of on the side for third place or this side for second place, I was in the middle for the gold. Third place. Washington Post has it already. <laughs> They've already sounded the alarm. So, you know, when we get back in, we, we will be the same old guys, the Tatum brothers. Yeah, you know. Two old codgers <laughs> who like to swim. Yeah. You've just been so good to us through the years, and we thank you and applaud you, and we pray that you will give us the victory in the next game that we play. The Smoky Mountain Mamas are a great ball team. They're, they're good athletes. They move well. They shoot outside well. And uh, their attitude is to get the Tigerettes. It's not a matter of they always win. It's a re-rivalry because of the uh, uh, you know, things that have been said, things that have been done. What is our motto? We, we want, want to win. win. <laughs> well, the Tigerettes are larger, taller, probably stronger. One girl in particular, I think her name is Nikki. She's a good player. She takes up a lot of room under the goal. She's probably 5'8 or 5'9 and just about that wide. They're gonna trash talk, they're good at that. They're gonna trash talk, but we take it all in stride. We hear it, but it doesn't sink in. One, two, three, seven, They are big, and they're strong, and so you've just got to outrun them, outshoot them and we can outshoot them any day.
people over there said to scream. Mom said, top man's got to come in. Okay, she's got to come on down. Because they're setting the screen on me and then popping the man out. I got to go out. Okay. One, two, three, seven, The other teams want us to get beat. You know, you, you pull for the underdog, I pull for the underdog. But when I get out on the court, I don't hear anything. Can't outrun us, can't outlast us. I think we're the best team. It's been a long time I've been nipping at the world record in pole vault. Right there. And if I do make it, it'd be like a climax of a story. It would be real satisfying, there's no doubt about it. Let me check it again. Where are you at now? Three jumps. If you don't make it in three jumps, you're out. It's always best to make it the first time and don't, don't worry about it. Tire yourself out two more, two more jumps. Second round. Yeah. Hoffman, yeah. you're up. Well, I don't know about that, but I was watching you yeah. do it. That's for a lot of I didn't chop it, though, I didn't. Mm. Ooh. Adolph's more serious about this than I am. He gets downhearted when he doesn't, if he's somebody beats him. I mean, he really, really affects him. See, this will be Mr. Hoffman's jump. Adolph's a very tough guy. He's come out of here bleeding a couple times from hitting the crossbar and uh, you know breaking his skin open a little bit, but we patch him up and he gets right back on the pole and goes for it. Very impressed, Adolph. You're not a quitter, they tell me, and all that kind of stuff. I said, no, I, I've never been a quitter. Well, you could do it, you could do it. Get on to the next one, you'll getting, get it, you'll get, get it. It's getting too close. Getting too close to one, one, one left. You're on deck. It's hard to say whether he definitely will or definitely won't, but I can guarantee that he will uh, make every effort. Maybe come up a couple of inches. Two inches? About two inches. Get serious here. Get serious. They expect something of you, and I hope to produce. I mean, I definitely don't want to disappoint them. I mean, you know, you know how that would be. Mm. 
I guess the excitement is too much, I don't know. We try not to let fear infiltrate our minds because we know that fear is the uh, greatest emotion of all. Come on, let's, let's, there's only a few minutes left in this thing. Let's give everything you everything got. We everything got. Everything you got. Let's, let's go. Go. They're not going to lay down and say, OK, Tigerette, you're going to win. We, you're going to have to really play rough to win, because we're going to rough you up. They do. I know that. So i got to stay at the top of my game. say anything good about the Tigerettes except that some of them are good players and some of them are, are not so good players. chance. I think we had a good chance of winning the goal. We were going to beat them. <laughs> there may be some hard feelings them toward us, but not us toward them because we don't, we don't hold grudges like that. Get in the gym, shoot 500 shots a day, get ready to go to Houston, Texas, and win number seven, girls, Yay! right? Yay! Death is going to come stealing in the night, as they say. This is something I can't control. The good Lord will say, hey, this is your ticket, and uh, now is the time. But I'm looking forward to keep on living and to keep moving 
be able to get around and take care of myself. As far as Ronaldo is concerned, he wants me to be his doubles partner at the Nationals in uh, Texas next June. So I told him I'll see him there. Roger was a big inspiration. I'll try to get in shape, and hopefully we can win another medal over there together anyway. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I got my one favorite story I'd tell about age when y'all were in the airport, and that lady walked past y'all, and she's a really tall lady, and y'all said, oh, you can play basketball, you so tall. And that lady said, honey, I'm 42 years old. I'm too old to play basketball. <laughs> And y'all all sitting there, well over 50. I don't think it's just the love of basketball. I think it's just the love of uh, continuing to do something with their lives. I mean, you'll put a basketball in each one of them's coffin, I promise you. They'll be going upstairs to play, I promise you. They're never going to stop, not these ladies. <laughs> okay, girls. All right. Show me your trophies. <laughs> I'm gonna make you a guarantee. I'm gonna catch as many as you do today. Good day. I realize that I'm getting old and most people my age are six foot under the ground instead of trying to pull off six foot or better. Well, I didn't say how many. I keep saying that how much longer are you going to be able to keep pushing yourself? He says, until the Lord tells me that it's over. He said, I don't feel that yet. Five years, eight years, 10 years. I don't have any more years I got, but I'm going to make the best of every one of them. For my age, I have to do something. I have to have something to look forward to, and this is the main thing I have to look forward to outside of my family. It's just plain and simple competition, even among friends or somebody you don't like, you know, you want to beat them. And that's the motivation I have to get to go forward. I haven't seen anybody who isn't happy and enthusiastic about participating. I see you! I see you! And that's what I like about the senior citizens, uh, you know, competition and whatnot. They're so happy. They really are. All of that. You have to have the competitive spirit in the first place. And then you have to have the determination that you're going to go on for as long as you can. And his grandfather, Roger General. As long as I can compete, I'm going to be out there. As long as I live, I'm going to be going for the gold medal and for the good life. Have a good lobster once in a while. Thank you all.
talking about this guy for weeks now. And the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. We're going to reveal who won that tennis match I had against him, the 100-year-old Roger Gentile Hall. And here he comes right now, Roger Gentile Hall. Say hello to Kelly. Hey, you hello. Been oh, I've been looking. Oh, You've been looking. You and I. You're the 100 year old greatest tennis player in the world. Fantastic. Roger Gentile. We'll be right back with you. Here's a story you may have seen on CNN 87 year old man in Texas who pole vaults. You see that guy? 87 years old, pole vaulting. See, that's when you know you've taken too much Viagra. Okay, Grandpa, you might want to cut down on the Viagra. <laughs> I'd like to get together and swim against either one of them to see what I can do now. Because I know what during old time they couldn't touch me in the swimming pool. Wow. But now I don't know. I might drown now. <laughs> Wait to see what they're doing. Is there, is there anything else that, that, that you want to that you want to mention? Well, I can't say it on TV. Drink good whiskey and good beer, you know, and put stop smoking. No, I don't mean that. Really. But, uh, I drink a little. I, I like Budweiser beer. I drink two beers every day. 